Hey everyone, Irit here. We are down to the last pages of this journal. I know, I know, I know. And I have to tell you, one color was left out. And that color is actually perline green that I have in my palette. But I don't think I will keep it in my palette. Um, just because I prefer Zoazite. Which is the next video after this one. So I cheated a little bit, sorry, <laughs> but <laughs> uh, because I didn't have a lot of pages left, I decided to focus um, in this page on two colors from my palette. So the left one is indigo and then the one on the right is in Danthron blue. Both of these are just beautiful, beautiful colors. And you see me scribbling there with the Carandash Neo Color 1 that I've been talking about. I still love them. Well, I only got them last week, but <laughs> they're fantastic. Um, yeah, so the blues. I love them both. The Indanthron Blue is actually both colors are quite standard. And I think every brand, you know, like serious brand has them in their range. Uh, Indanthron Blue is PB1660, if I'm not mistaken. It's a single pigment blue that is this beautiful, very deep, inky kind of blue. I think it's a lovely color. However, probably for me... I, I'm not going to keep it and most of the time I would use either ultramarine blue or indigo. Now indigo is an interesting color. It's uh, Every brand has its own version and they uh, do uh, vary. I have tried several. Most of the indigos contain black and that usually adds to it a, cert, uh, a certain flatness that I don't particularly like. However, my version here is the Schminke one, which is made from two blue pigments. And it's by far my favorite. I haven't been able yet to find um, a, a vegan dupe for it. I still have uh, like a tube that is, I don't know, half full or half empty depending how you want to look at it, <laughs> or a third full. So I'm just going to use that till I run out. Um, in the meantime, I have discovered other darks that I use a lot, like uh, Dusk Pink and Zoazite and Lunar Black. So I'm not, you know, too stressed <laughs> about replacing this. But if you don't, um, you know, if vegan colors are not a concern to you and you're looking for a beautiful lively um you know but still still kind of deep and dark and slightly muted indigo try the schminke version i i really don't i haven't found anything that comes close to um just like the richness but still it has you know this lovely um, vibrancy to it. It's a muted color, but I hope you know what I mean. It's not flat at all. And all the versions, the other versions that I've tried that have black in them are just really kind of flat and I didn't really uh, fall in love with them. So yeah, and indigo I think is one of those colors that is really popular. You can find some of, there are like some really big channels on YouTube of people that do portraits with watercolors, Kind of that really um, a little bit very like pretty uh, female characters, you know, portraits. And I've noticed that they use a lot of kind of these corally peachy colors with indigo. So I think it is a very popular color and it is beautiful. I think also uh, Felix Scheinberger, if I got his name right, he has some fantastic books. He's... Well, he's an illustrator, a sketcher, and he really has um, a very recognizable style that is, um, I'm, I don't know if to say vulgar. He has a lot of, he does a lot of <laughs> uh, portraits of uh, people in the German <laughs> Kit Kat clubs <laughs> with nudity and that, that sort of thing. But he also does a lot of like urban sketching and just a lot of sketching and I think he uses indigo a lot and uh, especially in his portraits and his nightscapes. So it's a it's a lovely color. 
I don't know if I'm gonna keep it. It's one of those colors that I find I don't use it a lot. And every time I use it, I'm like, oh, it's so pretty. I should use it more. So I don't know. <laughs> you can see here, I paired it with uh, some soft pinks. And yeah, it's a good, I think it's a really good combo. I think those um, peachy, maybe more reddish than I did here colors are a really good match to the indigo and I just had fun with these so I want to take this opportunity to talk I don't have a lot more to say about this page I love the neo color ones I think they are fantastic if you're on a budget maybe grab one or two and see how you like them before you commit to a set um, yeah so what's the plan First of all, we're going to go through all of the colors until we run out of space. Well, I'm going to, until I run out of space in my journal. <laughs> and then you can look forward, hopefully, to the flip through. I recorded uh, just one quick flip through with, you know, I'm going to add some music in the background. So for those who just want to see the, you know, finished flip through in a few minutes, you'll be able to do that. And now I'm in the process of also recording a chatty flip through and talking about each and every color in my palette and whether I'm going to keep it for the uh, autumn palette or Italy palette. Actually, my original plan was I did order another one of my uh, red palettes, not mine, another palette like you can see now on the screen. I ordered another one. But unfortunately, it's not going to get here in time for me to set it up as the Italy palette. I considered because if you look at my palette now on screen, the um, colors that you see in the wells, not in the pans, are quite vibrant. And I did want to introduce a lot of more earthy tones to the Italy palette. And I really wanted to use some of the wells for that. Uh, but I'm not going to be able to do that. So I don't know what I'm going to do. I'll probably just switch this palette around and add all the earth tones in the middle. I think I will um, try to mostly use large pans because I prefer those when I'm uh, painting kind of landscapes. I just It's nice to have a larger um, area for the paint. And yeah, so what I want to do in the chatty flip through video is talk about the colors and if I'm going to keep them and if, you know, I enjoyed using them. Uh, I think you can see that, hopefully you can see that for me, this summer palette was a huge success. I used it every single day and it really pushed me to explore some colors. Some of them I still feel like I need to play more and paint with them more before I can uh, kind of make my final decision and a lot of the time it's just you know what I'm into at the moment it really it, it can be that I love a certain color but I'm just not into it that's what happened to me with moon glow I love that color I didn't have it in my palette now for months and uh, you know I still loved it but I didn't feel like I need to use it and now I'll probably bring it back because it is such a lovely color so I'm gonna go through all the colors and what else I want to do? I want to also show you some of the mixes in my Etcher Lab porcelain palette, um, just to show you those triads that I was talking about. And also, I don't want to do a review yet because I feel like I need to paint with it more. I did go out with it a couple of times since uh, setting it up, and I really enjoy it. I enjoy it more than I thought. It's really cute and just fun to sit around with having that porcelain surface i cannot lie i really enjoy it so it's one of those things i didn't think i would like it so much i didn't think it would be as practical but uh, it's one of those things that you know are just fun to use and they make you want to use them even if they are far from perfect or ideal so uh, so far i'm pleasantly uh, surprised and really enjoying it. Um, I do think it might be a really nice palette. Someone suggested it in the comments and I think that's a great idea. Maybe even the 37 Wells version to fill it with those uh, specialty colors or accent colors and 
you know, have it as like a, a an add-on palette. So I don't know. I'll think about that. Uh, as for my Italy trip, I think I might take like two painting kits, one that I can carry around with me also when we do, you know, like day trips or something like that. And then the other one to have at our home base um, that will just, you know, just have a few more things that maybe don't travel as well but that I can really enjoy having my paints with me. So for example, I'll probably bring this palette with me, uh, just set up differently, and then take a, a smaller palette on me at all times. Which one? I don't know. I don't know if it'll be the Etcher one, and I definitely don't think it'll be the Micro uh, Portable Painter, which I have played with a couple of times, and there are certain aspects of it that I like, but it's just six colors. It's way too small for me. I'd rather take, you know, a, a traditional metal palette that is, yeah, three times bigger maybe than the micro painter, but it's still small and um, and put like 20 colors in that. I would much rather have that. Or I'm going to take my little um, art kit, the, um, you know, the credit card size one. That palette is fantastic and it's super, super compact. So I prefer that, I think. Here's a close-up. You can see the great resist that I got from the Neo Color One. I hope you enjoyed this video. I'll see you tomorrow, I think, with Zoezite. So see you soon. Bye-bye.